turn to shit. Whatever it is. I touch it, turns to shit. And it doesn't matter what it is, because the bracha is never there. And I actually talked about that in my essays. I wrote some essays about it before my, uh, before my fiancé showed up in my life. And I said that if it would ever happen, that God would eventually give to me a, a beshera, which didn't what was going to happen. I mean, I was in my mid-40s already. Like, when's it going to happen? I said, it's not going to last long. Because after six months, either she's going to die or something's going to happen. And whatever came from that is going gonna, is, is gonna to be taken away. And sure enough, we got engaged, and the engagement ended. Every single time that something good, that looks good for me, it will turn to shit. Something will go wrong with this interview, and it will backfire on me. You watch. Something will go wrong. This interview will go on the, on the YouTube, and it will turn to shit. I'm, I'm telling you, don't get near me. I'm like, I'm like contagious with, with negativity. I'm like, touch me and it's just like loserville. Anything that I touch turns to shit. Would you rather be happy or funny? Happy or funny? Okay, you know, I actually answered that many times. Um, the answer is that I mentioned that... Um, from the greatest comedy, from the greatest tragedy comes the greatest comedy, and I believe that I absolutely believe that um, my the gift that I have to be funny to make people laugh is uh, oh thank you so much yeah it's the bright light um, the studio lights the studio in here. lights in here these power lights are killing me um, that I absolutely believe that what are we talking to? Are right, I've got it I got it monitored. Oh. I'm just wondering if we're taking questions. So go ahead. Okay. Would you rather be happy or funny? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. What am I saying? Um, I absolutely believe that my ability to make people laugh has always been a gift that I have. It's a talent that I have, but I won't take credit for it. It's a gift that God gave me. And it's been my way of overcoming how tragic and how sad my life has been. And I, I always say this. It's a gift that I have that very few people have, right? That I can be in a group of 100 people and I'm going to be the funny one. You know, because most people don't have this bag of shit that they grew up with. Only comedians have this. But I would gladly give that gift back in a heartbeat not to pay the price for it. Because the price has been tragic for me. Okay? I would give that back in a heartbeat to have a normal life. Because here's what I paid for in the price. I had to grow up abused and deal with that. Then, right, well, maybe now it's over with because you're out of the house. No. I, wanna, I don't want to repeat the cycle of abuse. I'm doing the right thing. So I want to marry somebody who also doesn't want to do it. There is no such person in the Frum community because every single woman is compelled, every single Frum woman, I don't care how she grew up, feels compelled to spit out more kids. So the concept of me coming along and saying, hey, I don't want kids, doesn't exist. There's nobody who's going to marry me. I finally found somebody who would, one special Sadekas out there, the special Neshama, this Jewish from woman who didn't want kids, and it was impossible and it didn't work out. And you know what? I'm going to spend the rest of my life, you know, it's been like 50 years already like this. I know I'm looking, I'm staring down the barrel of another 50 years like this, and I hate it. So yeah, I, in a heartbeat, I would trade all of this just to have a normal life and be just like everybody else and blend in with the Frumsteins and do that whole shtick. I would much rather have that. Yeah, I'm funny and you know I'm a celebrity and all this stuff. It sucks because at the end of the night, I don't care how many people I make laugh. I don't care how many people in the audience can have a 5,000 people in a room and I'm making them all laugh and they're cracking up and they all think I'm funny and I'm, they all love me. But at the end of the night, they're all going home with their date. And they're all going home to their wives or their husbands. And they're all going to get laid. And they're all happy. And Rabs, I'm going home alone. And it's the mornings I wake up from a show like that that you would think, wow, that was a great show. Everybody loved you. You must be so happy. No, those are the mornings I wake up and I'm suicidal. Because I realize even making a room of, of a thousand people laugh doesn't fix the problem. The, it, nothing's going to fix this. I can make the whole fucking world laugh. It's not going to change anything. At the end of the day, I'm still single, I still have to be Shomer Nagia, and my life fucking sucks. Okay, so I'm a little bit angry. <laughs> Go ahead. There's water there. That's I got it. I'm, I'm on top of it. Thank you very much. So how do you resist all those women who throw themselves at you after, after shows, trying to tempt you into immorality? Been, how did you know that happens? 
I've been there. I've been there. I've I've had drunk chicks at the comedy store and the improv come up to me and like hit on me big time after shows. I mean, it's tempting, you know. But what am I going to do? I can't do it. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, you know, you're a hill of shem going on stage and all this stuff." What's a rabbi doing? You know, it's like, do you realize what a kiddush Hashem I make going on stage, just being like this? I allow people who've never seen a frummy, you never seen a real Jew in their lives. I bring that to them right in front of their, seat. and what do they see? They see that I'm normal. They, they see a normal. I mean, just a normal guy who happens to be a rabbi and happens to be from, right? I'm just a normal guy, just like them, right? So they actually get to say, "Oh my God." Frummies aren't these crazy people, you know, like throwing rocks at people and, you know, whatever, that they have like these stupid preconceived stereotypes. You know, I come in, I shatter all these stereotypes, and I just say, hey, you know what, I'm normal too. I'm just like you. You know, I want to get laid, sure. You know, and I can't because I'm constricted by this religion, you know. And so they see that, and they see that I'm normal. What am I going with this? I'm babbling. What the hell was I supposed to answer? I was asking you how you dealt with women who were trying to tempt you into immorality. Oh, right. So the Kiddush Hashem that I make is that I go up there, right, and I let everybody see this. And you know what the things I don't do? I don't perform on Friday nights and Saturday nights, right? And those are like the big nights for comedy. Mm -hmm. Like, if you can't perform Friday and Saturday night, you're not going to make a living in, in, in stand-up comedy. You, mm -hmm. you won't, because those are the only nights to pay. I don't eat kosher, non-kosher food. You know, and I was in a comedy team that used to have dinners and, you know, food brought into the green room before we'd go on. I can't eat any of that stuff. You know, and I was always standing out as different. I was the only person in a comedy troupe that, you know, when the pot was being, you know, they would smoke pot and pass it around. I was the one person, like, don't pass it to the rabbi, you know. And I had, like, all this stuff. And then here's another one. Everybody else is, like, touching and all this stuff. I, I, I don't even touch women. You know, and, and that becomes like an issue. Like, oh, I forgot, reps. Explain to everybody why you don't touch women. You know, and like, boom, now they're going to learn about the laws of Hilchus Shomer Nagia. And then what do they see after the after the show? Chicks are coming up to me. Rabs doesn't touch them. Rabs won't, you know, kiss them. Rabs won't have anything to do with them. You know, all the other guys are picking up. You know, all the other comedians are picking up. With, not Rabs. So people get to see that. I mean, I think it's a kiddush Hashem. You know, and I'm not going to mention names, but there's another celebrity frummy looking Jew out there who is not Shomer Nagia publicly and he goes out you know and after he does his concerts I'm not gonna again I'm not gonna say who it is he gets photographed publicly putting his arms around women I I don't do that okay so I have a problem with that you know what's he getting all this notoriety for and like what happened to Rabbi Rabs who's actually not doing that all right go ahead just had to get that off my chest Again, I'm not going to say names, you know. Do you abstain from int intimacy with women 100% because the Torah says so? Right. Or do you abstain because for any other reasons? No, I only, I, it's only because if the Torah didn't say that, <laughs> if the Torah, oh my God, you know how many women hit on me on a daily basis? You have any idea? No. Uh, unbelievable. You know, and I'm not not uh, unbelievable. Be between the video, between um the internet, and and you know, in person or whatever, on a daily basis, I'm gonna say that I, I'm not even gonna venture to guess, but I'm gonna say a new chick hits on me every single day. You could have been the Jewish world chamberlain. I could if I took advantage of it, but you know, and I have to fly around a lot because they all live like in these redemption. different cities. Yeah. You could have like healed the shattered vessels. But um, if I didn't, if it was not for the Torah, you know, I'd probably bang all of them. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if I did make like a tour. I'd go on tour. You know? I don't know. A lot of them are married. Kind of depressing. Depressing that married women would want to... Yeah, they would hit on me. I get hit on a lot by married women. It's weird. Married Orthodox women? All kinds. So, when you were a child and you talked about making a career in comedy or, or journalism, how did your peer group and your Jewish community react? Um... Wait a minute. When you, like, rephrase that. I'm sorry. I was when you were a child, yeah. you talked about your dreams of 